Welcome to County Report this week. I'm Michael Bruin. Thank you for watching. County Executive Mark Elridge recently announced that he intends to nominate Acting Police Chief Marcus Jones to serve as the new police chief for Montgomery County. Jones, who has been with the Montgomery County Police Department for 34 years, is a former chairman of the National Black Police Association and served on the board of directors for the National Law Enforcement Memorial Fund and the Task Force on Mentoring in Montgomery County. If approved, Jones will become Montgomery County's 17th police chief and the third African American to hold the position. Newly introduced legislation will prohibit vape shops from being a certain distance from schools throughout Montgomery County. My MC Media's Jordan Lindsay has more details. As a student uh, at Richard Montgomery High School, uh, quite often I've seen uh, students in the bathroom uh, smoking uh, using e-cigarettes. There is a rapid rise in e-cigarette use among youth. To combat this public health crisis, new prevention measures are underway in Montgomery County. E-cigarettes have increased their use between 2011 and 2015 among youth by 900 percent. The newly introduced bills would prohibit vape shops near certain schools and prohibit e-cigarette manufacturers from distributing near schools. The first is called ZTA 1906, 1906, which is a zone text amendment that aims to curb the sale of vaping products within a half mile of middle schools and high schools in Montgomery County. And if we want our children to stop utilizing these products, it's not just about age, but it's about restricting access. Currently, there are approximately 22 vape shops located throughout Montgomery County. Officials say 19 of them are located within a half mile of high schools and middle schools. We also aim through uh, Council Bill 2919 to prohibit manufacturers from selling e-cigarettes or distributing them to retail stores also within a half mile of middle schools or high schools. Now this would include convenience stores, this would include all of the locations and there are at least 600. And then finally, the, one of the provisions of the County Council is, is that we serve as the Board of Health Regulation here in Montgomery County. And under that provision and under this bill, we plan on executing that authority to ensure that the entire county, including municipalities, follow this legislation as well. We need to do our part. And so our part is standing up as a county to say, that we understand that these products are dangerous and that they pose a health risk to our kids. This legislation will be introduced on Tuesday and a public hearing is scheduled for November 5th. Reporting in Rockville, Jordan Lindsay for County Report This Week. Montgomery County has launched a six-month e-scooter pilot program that serves the county's goal of providing more transportation options that support a greener county. Susan Kennedy has the story. It's the newest mode of transportation that's hit the streets, dockless scooters. And Montgomery County is the latest jurisdiction to wheel into this micro-mobility trend. Maybe a half of the people that ride these would have been in a car. So we're reducing the amount of cars on the road. The county is participating in a six-month pilot program with three companies that have deployed the dockless e-scooters, Lime, Lyft, and bird. All you need to do to ride one of the vehicles is install an app on your phone. Uh, would then if I want to ride, I'd push ride. Councilmember Hans Riemer likes the idea of giving residents the opportunity to be a part of this eco-friendly smart city technology. What I see one of the strengths is is it can make a it can shorten a commute by a, a, enough of a difference that I think more people will will find it, it is a good option for them and, and using public transportation will become a good option for them. The pilot is currently running in two service areas in the county and there are more than 300 scooters available to rent. However, before implementing the pilot, the council asked for certain safety measures, including training classes, insurance, and hours of operation. You have to be 18. Uh, you have to have a driver's license. You cannot operate it between 10 p.m. and 5 a.m. That's where most of the fatalities on scooters have occurred in the country overnight. The scooters only travel up to speeds of 15 miles per hour and can only be used on the street. So what are these things? And there are plenty of pedestrians who are curious to find out more about this trend that's zooming ahead. Having this around in the area would be great. Uh, it beats me from uh, walking distances. But right now, I think this is a great recreational uh, activity for uh, dates and uh, so forth. And Councilmember Reamer says the availability of this option 
has the potential to close gaps in urban transportation that cars, buses, trains, and bikes just can't close. It's just one more option. It's a you've got you got the bus, you know, you've got metro, you got scooters, you got bikes, you, you can walk. All what we need is all the different options to work together. Reporting from Silver Spring, I'm Susan Kennedy. MCDOT is interested in your views regarding the introduction of dockless e-scooters. The survey remains open, so please take five minutes to respond to this very brief survey if you haven't done so already. County Executive Mark Elridge will be hosting a series of budget forums in the coming months. He'll be holding five forums to seek input from residents about the fiscal year 2021 operating budget priorities. All forums begin at 7 p.m., and the first one will take place on Monday, October 7th, at the new Wheaton Library Recreation Center. It will also be broadcast on County Cable Montgomery and Facebook. Additional forums are scheduled across the county. Residents' participation is important and encouraged. These forums allow residents to get information about the priorities taken into consideration while preparing the budget, and they also give them an opportunity to give direct input to the county executive. For more information, go to MontgomeryCountyMD.gov. Rockville's historic vote-by-mail election is November 5th, and Rockville 11's Kathy Danzler brings you the details on casting your ballot. Rockville's historic vote-by-mail election is just around the corner. Ballots will be mailed to registered voters on or before October 11th. And we want to make sure Rockville voters know that there is not just one way to cast your ballot by mail. Once you received your ballot, select one candidate for mayor and four candidates for council. Place the completed ballot in the prepaid envelope and drop it in the mail. Bring it to the drop box. You can also drop off your completed ballot 24-7 in the secure drop box located at City Hall. Bring your ballot to the vote center. On election day, you can bring your ballot to the only vote center here at City Hall and fill your ballot out in person. Remember, ballots must be received by 8 p.m. on election day, November 5th, and postmarks will not be counted. For more information on Rockville's vote by mail election, head to rockvillemd.gov election. For County Report This Week, I'm Kathy Dantzler. Coming up on County Report This Week, the annual County Friendship Picnic was a huge success. And if you don't know about the exploding popularity of pickleball, you should. Stay with us. Kind of report this week. We'll be right back. Save money and time with Ride On's Kids Ride Free. That's 24-7 on all Ride On routes, including flex in most Metro bus routes in the county. Get a K-12 Youth Cruiser Smart Trip card at any Montgomery County Public Library or participating schools. Visit youthcruiser.com for what to bring. Then, just tap the card on the fare box to ride. Get the card and get going with Ride On's Kids Ride Free. In Montgomery County, we have a goal to reduce waste and recycle 70% of all waste by 2020. By recycling and reducing waste, we save natural resources and make our community even better. So recycle at home, work, school, everywhere, and keep recycling going. For more information, call the Montgomery County, Maryland Division of Solid Waste Services at 311 or visit montgomerycountymd.gov slash recycling. Keep it going. Recycle more now. What will Montgomery County look like in the year 2050? This is our chance to figure out what the future of the county can be and how it will grow so that every resident can have the opportunity to thrive. Montgomery County can be a place where we invest equitably in our communities to make them vibrant and safe for all ages and incomes to work, live, and play. Together we can set a vision for the infrastructure that connects our residents and creates a roadmap for a more sustainable, responsible, and prosperous county. Let's plan our future together. Welcome back to County Report This Week, I'm Michael Bruin. Montgomery County Executive Mark Elridge joined residents of diverse cultures and faiths at the seventh annual Montgomery County Friendship Picnic at Wheaton Regional Park. The annual event encourages making new friendships and having discussions on ways to build a stronger community. 
There were a wide range of activities for children and adults, including music, dancing, a moon bounce, a petting zoo, a carousel, and even a train ride. The event is an initiative of the Montgomery County Committee Against Hate and Violence. If you're looking for a job, the Census Bureau is hiring. The 2020 Census will take place early next year, but the Bureau is already looking for workers. About 600 people will be hired in Montgomery County alone. If you're interested, you can apply online at 2020census.gov slash jobs or call 1-855-562-2020. More than 200 people attended the inaugural ceremonies of the new Montgomery County Sports Hall of Fame at the Silver Spring Civic Building. County Executive Mark Elridge was among the speakers, and sportscaster Dave Johnson was the event's MC. I am very honored that I was chosen to be a part of the inaugural class of the Montgomery County Sports Hall of Fame. I grew up in the Montgomery County area. I've moved back recently to the Montgomery County area. This is home. I'm a Marylander. Um, I'm a product of the public school system, and what's so exciting for me this evening is I get to share this evening with my husband and two of my four children, and to share in this amazing experience and bring my kids back to the neighborhood, actually, Silver Spring, where I grew up, is uh, bringing back some pretty spectacular memories. She has such fun memories of growing up here, and she still stays in touch with so many of her friends and so many of her teachers. And visits her schools when she can, visits other schools. Um, this, is a, this is an important part of her life and growing up, so this means a lot. You got three professional athletes and two Olympic gold medal winners, and me? I mean, you know, there's something wrong with that equation right there, but, uh, you know, hey, I'll take it, you know, I'll, I'll enjoy it. I love Montgomery County. I love the relationships that were established. My friends are here tonight. Um, I believe the foundation that was established here in Montgomery County is who I am today and you know it's a reason I came back to play for the Redskins because of how uh, my affection towards uh, the, the, the area. I mean here's my roots, here's my friends and some of the, my closest people who inspired me to be great. Pickleball is one of the fastest growing sports in the country and Rockville is helping meet the demand. Rockville 11's Kathy Danzler highlights the perfect place for you to play. Pickleball combines tennis, ping pong, and badminton, and it's a sport that is trending, and Rockville wants to make sure you have a place to play. This is literally the first dedicated pickleball facility in all of Montgomery County. What we're typically doing is going to tennis courts, chalking it, dropping plastic lines, setting up portable nets, there are four new pickleball courts at Maddie J.T. Stepanek Park that even feature lighting so you can play at night. These pickleball courts that the city of Rockville have just put in, <laughs> they're a lifesaver for me. I was traveling a lot to play pickleball and now I get to come 10 minutes to these dedicated courts. Rockville also offers drop-in play opportunities at the city's community centers. Find out more by checking out Recreation and Parks Activity Guide Life in Rockville. You can pick one up at any community center or check it out online at rockvillemd.gov life. The third annual Wheaton Arts Parade and Festival was held on Sunday, September 22nd. The parade featured more than 70 artists, marching bands, dance companies, artistic floats, and costume performers, as well as three stages of local musicians and storytellers. The parade and festival celebrates the arts and cultural diversity of the community. Now it's time to meet our pet of the week. This week we introduce you to another bunny whose name is Blizzard. He's a one-year-old rabbit with a great deal of love to give. Blizzard loves jumping around his kennel, has an adventurous spirit, and is always excited to greet people when they come into the small animal room to visit. Blizzard is a curious, fun, sweet bunny and would love to find his forever home. If you're interested in Blizzard, you can visit the shelter's website at montgomerycountymd.gov ASD to learn about the adoption process. And don't forget to follow Montgomery County Animal Services and Adoption Center on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at MCASAC. With that, we close this edition of County Report this week. Remember, you can get more information about Montgomery County at montgomerycountymd.gov or follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Join us again at this time every week for a look at what's going on inside Montgomery County. I'm Michael Bruin. Thank you for watching.